it's like 3 a.m. I'm in my feels and I want to do a rant video. So a huge pet peeve of mine is when people say, do as I say, not what I do. I think it's super irritating, especially considering that it usually comes from older people to younger people because old people always know exactly what they're talking about. Now I'm all about respect your elders, but to be honest, getting old isn't really a choice. I hate that in our culture, we celebrate someone aging as this huge accomplishment. Now, don't get me wrong, I completely, okay, don't get out. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I completely understand that aging is such a huge privilege. So many people are denied the privilege of aging every single day. Well, I'm so grateful for every single wrinkle on my body and every single part of me that's getting old because, again, so many people don't get to. But at the same time, growing old isn't a choice, growing up is. And there's a lot of people who are just really grown up babies. I meant to say old babies, but yeah, there's also a lot of kids that are just really grown up and mature. I don't think age really means that much, but now we're kind of getting on an unrelated tangent. So anyways, I've never been a do as I say, not what I do kind of person. I teach dance and I used to try to give a lot of advice, but then I realized that these were things that I myself was never doing. So now I make it a really big point that I only say things that I genuinely believe and would genuinely do myself. However, when it comes to the world of YouTube and being a YouTuber, now don't like try to humble me. I know exactly where I stand. A thousand subscribers is minuscule in the scale of YouTube. But in my opinion, if there's anything that I say or do that negatively affects even one living animal, then that's way too much for me. So this all kind of started when I posted my recent video, which was just on my rabbit daily routine and my kind of thoughts after free roaming for one week. And there's a lot of stuff in there, which I guess isn't really ideal for rabbits, but it's just stuff that I've always done and seems to work for me. A big point of this is just letting my rabbits outdoors. For example, I've lived in my area a very long time and I feel very comfortable doing it, but I completely understand why it's criticized. At the same time, I don't know if it's something I should be sharing because what if someone else decides to copy me and take their rabbits outside, but their situation is completely different. When it's something like taking your rabbits outdoors, there are so many factors that you can't control. And I'm not gonna lie and tell you that it's not a risk because it's absolutely such a huge risk. Even if you haven't used fertilizers in your lawns for years and years and you don't have any issues with that, what if your neighbor uses fertilizer and then it blows into your lawn? Or what if you've never had predators and you've lived in that exact area for 10 or 20 years, but then one day randomly something happens. It could even just be something like a loose neighborhood cat. I guess it kind of comes down to, should I stop doing things just because I'm a YouTuber now and things I do could affect other rabbits? Or should I do those things and not share it? Or should I do those things and share it, but just put a bunch of disclosures? This also brings me to another point of, is adding disclaimers and being politically correct in the pet community world at least, is that something that people want? I know a lot of people will say things like, I want to discuss some YouTubers in general, but I don't want to name anyone in particular. And I'm like, girl, you're obviously talking about this one specific YouTuber. Just say their name. So I've always done that. I've never been scared to say what I think, but then it makes me wonder if I'm really doing the right thing, especially when you watch so many of your videos being so misinterpreted, you're wondering if you're actually doing any help. I want to keep ranting, but I also have to get the rabbit. So let me do that and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Also, I just wanted to like backtrack a little bit. I feel like the outdoor rabbits thing made me sound a little bit petty. I completely agree that there's some things I do that might not be ideal. For example, my rabbits have never shown an interest in chewing. So I've always just left cords lying around. I know it's pretty terrible, but I don't know. They just never showed an interest and it's always worked for me. They've literally never chewed anything. However, it's not that hard to just rabbit proof your cords and put them away and that's what I started to do. Even leaving them out with my rabbits who haven't shown an interest, there's always a possibility that they could go on a chewing frenzy one day and decide that they want to chew them. And again, considering how easy it is just to put them away, there's literally no reason to have them out. So I stopped doing that mainly because it's a personal thing, but also I don't want anyone to see a cord and rabbits running around and think that it's okay for them to try. Another thing is I used to lose a lot of cardboard boxes with ink on them. 
I'm trying really hard to stop. It just seems so convenient because I hardly get boxes that don't have ink. But also, again, it's an unnecessary risk and I don't want someone to copy exactly what I'm doing when there's such an easy change to not do it. But some other things, like the way I hold my rabbit, I was holding Batman in probably not the very best way. I was kind of just holding him from the center and not supporting his butt. I'd never recommend you actually holding your rabbits that way, but I had a camera on one hand and it just felt really natural. I hold my rabbits in all sorts of weird ways because one, Sachin, come here. Can I pick you up? <laughs> He's like, not today, sister. They're like really good with being picked up. They're also dwarf rabbits, which I think helps a lot. So they're not super particular about it and they never kick and I've never had any issues. I don't carry them when it's unnecessary. I don't carry them around my house for long periods of time because if they do decide to kick or want to get away, I don't want them to escape into an unsafe area. But if I am just carrying them around, especially in the pet room when I can easily put them down, sometimes I do it in ways that aren't ideal. To be completely honest, I probably won't stop doing that simply because it's just what comes naturally to me. But at the same time, I don't know if I should keep showing it. Is it setting a bad example? Is that something I should stop doing? Because people could see that and assume that's the right way to hold a rabbit. Another thing that's been weighing on my mind a lot is if YouTubers are responsible for their toxic fan bases. Being a viewer, I always felt like certain YouTubers just had really harsh and mean fans. And I was always angry with the YouTubers for never addressing it. I always felt like YouTubers should be held responsible for their fan bases. It's kind of like a cause and effect thing. If someone is watching this YouTuber and every single person watching them has become really rude and really spiteful to everyone else, there has to be something wrong with that YouTuber, right? But at the same time, discussing such controversial and important topics like living animals and their care, I feel like the passion is bound to come out and sometimes it doesn't always come out in the nicest way. Especially when YouTube, when not everyone speaks the same language, we can't really have tone and facial expression. I feel like some things just come across a lot ruder than maybe they're meant to be. I've seen a couple common threads on my videos that I would say are borderlining on a little bit rude, maybe even attacking. I hate when I see one person being attacked by a lot of other people. I just feel like that's not a fair fight on the internet. And I never know whether it's my place as a YouTuber to come in and butt people to spot stop or tell people to stop, especially when my entire channel is all about, you know, freedom of speech and sharing your own opinions, regardless of whether it's controversial. I also hate the idea of YouTubers taking like ownership of their fans. That's why I hate having like fan names for my channels. I'm never going to call you guys like perfect tears or something because that's weird you guys aren't my subscribers or my viewers you guys are just you and you happen to watch my channel and that's how I like it to be so I feel like it's really weird of me to come on as like a moderator on the channel and be like hey everybody play nice but then sometimes I feel like I should butt in and say something since I guess in a way this is like my platform I don't know I literally have nothing to say I just wanted to capture this cute clip where both the bunnies want to be pet <laughs> oh also this is so random but are you guys like mean to your pets i guess i've said a couple things in the past and it's kind of like scared people um i have a clip of me telling my chair gliders to shut up and i didn't know that was mean i like i always call my chihuahua a rat dog and i tell him he's ugly but i feel like that's how i talk to my friends too like i i try not to be sarcastic on videos because i feel like sometimes it just Especially on YouTube, I don't love it when YouTubers are super sarcastic. Especially when discussing important topics like animal care because I think it just can come across a little bit rude and snotty. However, I don't know. I don't know. Just how I talk to my animals. Is it actually rude? I mean, I feel like with animals, more than what you're saying, it's the tone. Also, do you guys know like how when people like each other, they start mirroring each other? I swear bonded rabbits do that. Like, there's literally both, like, we could put a mirror right here, and that's, like, literally the same action. What the heck? Also, what are you guys' thoughts about me doing a video, like, debunking my age? I always kind of wanted to do a dedicated video to that because I thought it would be funny, and I, I'm actually 19, so I actually have evidence to prove it. I wanted to show, like, my graduation photos and maybe, like, a clip of me actually driving, and then like my valedictorian sash and like some of my college code because like I'm hella proud of that that lit guys like assignments and college coding assignments they literally take like eight hours straight on multiple days 
you could work like 30 hours a week on a project and not be done. So I just thought it'd be cool to show some of that and like maybe some of my math homework because I have really neat handwriting and I'm kind of really proud about how much pride I take in doing my work. But I just thought it'd be fun to do and I thought it'd be like, I don't know, I thought it'd be like kind of sassy if I had a video to refer people to every time they said that I was 12. But at the same time, I'm wondering if it would even be worth it. I feel like every single video I make, especially now when I have like a huge to-do list of videos I want to do, about them being about rabbit care because i realized that the rabbit care education on youtube is so much more lacking than i ever thought it would be like i still need to do a video on scatter feeding and i think some youtubers discuss it here and there but i haven't found any dedicated videos about it for rabbits so i've been meaning to make that one forever and i still haven't gotten around to it so any video that i make i feel like i'm taking away from an educational video that I could be making so that's kind of why i don't want to do it and I feel like there's some people that just wouldn't believe me no matter what. Like, I have a clip of me driving in my neuter vlog where I go to pick these guys up and drop them off. And I was just by myself, so of course it wasn't literally me driving. It was just me, like, get in the car and then, like, yeah, it was just me in the car dropping them off and, like, walking to the car. It was just really casual. I didn't think much of it. And then when people were telling me that I was lying, I was like, oh, I can refer them to the vlog and they can see that I'm driving. And I literally had people call me out and being like, you're not actually driving. You're just sitting in the car. And I'm like, what the heck? I can't actually like film while I'm driving. I guess I could, but that's not what I did. So I'm wondering if that'd be a video you guys are interested in seeing or you think I should make it just so I can kind of stick it to the people who don't believe me. But at the same time, I don't even know if it's important. I don't know what proving your age really means because even if I was 12 years old, like my points would still be just as valid. Gosh, even if I was like three years old. Stop putting so much weight on someone's age. Hey, that kind of ties back into the first part of the video. So I'm gonna go to bed. That was just my midnight rant. I kind of like doing this. It makes me feel better to get everything off my chest. You're my favorite shirt. You're probably my favorite pet. Do you guys have favorite pets? I have favorite pets. Bunnies, you're not super high on the list because you give me really bad allergies. Guess who doesn't give me allergies? You know. Also, I was just working on some stuff, but I just wanted to add in this clip. It's a ramp video. It's not supposed to be super professional, but that's kind of the point. Do you guys think it's important to be professional in YouTube videos? I walked over to my dog because people argue that they never, I think some people don't know I have a dog and some people might think that he's dead because I get comments about being like, oh, is that your past three dog at your profile picture? I'm like, nope, he's still alive. Okay, my point is, do you guys think that, especially now, if like someone is getting paid for YouTube, which I am, it's very, very minimal, but... I am making some money off my videos. Do you feel like the production quality should be higher? I, when I first monetized my channel, I didn't want like my videos to change, but it kind of makes me wonder, wonder whether I should and whether I should be taking more time into like effort into creating my videos or whether, I don't know, what do you guys like? Do you guys think it's important to have a super well-edited video? I think especially my videos where I'm discussing controversial topics or just like less talked about topics, I don't necessarily try to make them edited super well, but I like to make sure that every comment I say is super well thought out. One, to just like reduce misunderstandings. And then also I feel like some of these subjects, it's like everyone's time is super valuable. And if I do want a bunch of people to see the video, I'd rather be short and concise. A lot of them are like 30 minutes, but that's me after doing like 300 takes and probably filming the video twice to try to concise it down. So yeah, I always take a lot of pride in the things that I say in my videos. I always feel like you can go back however long you want, and I still stand by everything I said. Like, of course, there's things that I would do differently now, and that's just, like, growing as a person. I feel like regret, if you don't regret anything in your life, like, have you changed? The things I did as a 12-year-old, I regret so badly because I'm not a 12-year-old anymore. But again, I hope that makes sense. I still stand by the person that I was at 12 and I respect who I was then and the same way I respect the things that I've said in my video. So I do take a lot of time and pride into that. I just don't take a lot of pride into editing, but I'm wondering if maybe I should and whether I should be putting more effort into that. So yeah, leave your thoughts down below. Me and Coco, his name is Coco. Some people don't know your name. Okay, me and Coco are actually gonna leave now. Bye.